So what are your demons? What are, what are those voices, those uh, influences in your life that can cause you to drift away from the compassion of God, that can instill a, a lack of confidence in the great shalom? What are those voices? Where do they come from? How do they influence us and take us away from God's peace and deny the grace that can be uniquely had through Christ in the building of a new kingdom here on earth. What are those voices? Can we discern them? Can we hear them? Can we differentiate those voices from the gospel? Can we see how our lives may drift away from time to time and not resemble the peace that surpasses all, of an, all understanding? What are your demons? Well, as uh, someone who has been clean and sober since 1988, I have attended maybe 2,000 meetings uh, with people like me that frequently attempt to answer that question. What are our demons? What are the things in our life that can cause us so much pain and suffering? Those thoughts, those ideas, those actions or activities that can cause us so much pain and suffering that we are likely to go back to the drink to kill the pain. And so we look at all kinds of things and to be a member of the community of recovery really requires that one lead a life of introspection that we look clearly in the mirror and understand our days our influences and those things within us and around us that can truly take us off of our game. And once that happens, and if the pain is great enough, we'll go back to drinking. And that's really, for us, not such a good idea. And let's be clear, I uh, don't propose uh, prohibition or something. I'm just talking about people like me that can't seem to take a drink. But I do think the idea of this 12-step spirituality that allows us to look at our lives and to examine our lives and to discern where we are is something that probably is useful for all people. So what are your demons? Well, in today's story, we see Jesus uh, entering a synagogue and he is about to preach and teach. And uh, that's, that synagogue is uh, overlooking the Sea of Galilee. And as a matter of fact, Beth and I were there. Uh, that's another uh, uh, place we were at a couple years ago. And it was really, really an amazing thing that... Um, I had the opportunity, we had the opportunity to stand in that very, that space that is referred to today. Now, in truth, the uh, ruins of the synagogue we were uh, standing in the midst of, and all of the columns is quite interesting, they were ruins, but in fact, that ruin was built on top of the synagogue Jesus would have been teaching in. Apparently, there was a great earthquake that took place a few hundred years after the death and resurrection of Jesus, and then this new one was built on top of it. And uh, across the street, uh, we'll talk about this next week, uh, was uh, Peter's mother-in-law's house. So all of this was right there. But as I was standing in the midst of this kind of sacred ruin, if you will, I imagined today's lesson, I imagined what it must have been like to be there and to hear Jesus preaching and teaching with great power. I mean, he wasn't teaching like one of the scribes. He wasn't just reading something someone else wrote. He was the living word, and the people could feel the power 
that came through. I mean, he was like a north wind blowing. I mean, he was the truth, and the truth had a profound impact as the people listened to him speak. Now, there was a man there. We don't know his name, but there was a man in that synagogue that very day who was, uh, had a demon inside him. There was something inside him that was keeping him from experiencing the fullness of life. And this demon, this dark side of existence, this power, whatever it might have been, it, it listens to the word of Jesus and it feels like it's being cut right in two. Because we know that the truth... The truth cuts like a two-edged sword. The truth can set one free. And this demon, recognizing it cannot compete against the truth, leaves the man, and the man is now set free. I wonder, I wonder if that man, in his own power, however, opened himself up to the truth and in some way exercised the demon himself. I don't know. But he was there and he listened and he learned and he was set free. So what happens to the guy? I, we, don't, you know, we don't know his name. We don't know if he ends up being a disciple of Jesus or what happens. But we do know one thing is that the truth set him free. The power of shalom. And so for us, here in 2021, people who are disciples of Christ, people who are attempting to live the, the good word, people who are, however in 2021, living in the world we live, and we can be influenced by a whole variety of voices that then start to fill our hearts and minds with thoughts and actions that absolutely do not resemble shalom. It's possible. It's probable. It's highly likely. But the challenge for us as we attempt to understand what those demons might be is to place ourselves on the pathway of shalom, to understand God's mercy and forgiveness and loving kindness and justice and all of these things to keep unpacking this and to become more and more adept at understanding the differences in these forces that are going on within our world and how we are impacted by them. It's a constant battle, this fighting the good fight of faith. It is not to be taken lightly. You must be on guard, always on guard. Every generation that preceded us needed to be on guard. There were those forces, whatever they may be. But you know what? If you stay in the slipstream of God's grace and focus on it, you begin to understand the difference. And sometimes it's pretty surprising, the stuff we buy. But the good news is this. We've been given life, we've been given faith, we've been given the opportunity to continue to grow, to recognize as long as we have life, there's opportunity for growth. We've been given the understanding that we worship a God who loves us beyond our wildest expectations, is willing to forgive us of all of our sins, is with us every step of the way, that wants for us the best of what life has to offer and wants us to share that with the world around us. And that's pretty good news. 
And beyond that, each week we get the power of our holy meal that comes to us, the blood and the body of Christ that strengthens and keeps us and gives us what we truly need to take those very next steps. And with that, we become agents of light. Amen.